So the last game of the day was, well, we don't know who won which game first, but the last game for us to look at from that first round action or second round action was this one by Jaden. Jaden Shaw is playing black, so I'm going to flip the board again. And this will be the last game that I'll look at today. I wanted to look at more games, but it's quite a time consuming process. Jaden is facing d4, he plays knight to f6. This player plays a quick b. Bishop g5 move. I think we'd call that a Trampovsky attack. Jaden plays e6 and knight d2 is played. Bishop e7. All reasonable moves so far. So this is a well known Trampovsky position. And uh, Jaden has played fairly well, logical moves. White is playing pretty much similar to how Malaku played in the game before. Uh, so that's interesting that a Jamaican used a similar attack against one of the people and now it's being used against a Jamaican. A sort of Trampovsky system with the bishop advanced to g5 and a pawn on c3 for white. In this game, white plays a4. Black tries to develop his pieces. a5 is played. Very provocative move. And here, Jaden decides to lock up the game on the queen side, which is not necessarily the best way for such an active player to play. But when he locks up the position, white doesn't respond with his bishop immediately. Instead, he pushes his pawn all the way to a6. Black plays the most aggressive move up for his bishop. is bishop to c5, c6, sorry. And then white defends his bishop by dragging it back to c2. So the computer says the game is completely even. I'm not so sure that I like what Black has done because Black has really um, sealed up the game on the queen side, but I don't think that gives him any kind of advantage or any kind of counterplay. However, it's a pretty safe position. So I guess it's good strategy against higher rated players to keep the game tame. And that's what Jaden is trying to do here. But to my mind, white now has an attack on the king side and black doesn't really have anything because the attack on the queen side is not really significant. Um, I might be wrong. He might be able to play moves like rook b8 and then push the pawn all the way down to b4. You know, it's hard to tell who, but certainly the attack on the queen side is not that dangerous relative to the one that might materialize on the king side. But it's still pretty even at this juncture. Uh, black plays a reasonable move, get his queen off of the back rank. And now white breaks open as quick as he can in the center. looks risky but I can't pretend to tell you that I see all the tactics here basically the bishop on e7 is going to drop if you just randomly move a knight from f6 so he opts to defend it with his rook first which allows white to take off the knight and Jaden takes back with his bishop, which allows white to swap bishops. And now we see the game pattern coming out that material is pretty much even. Both sides have a white squared bishop. 
However, White has been able to plant his knight in on e5 and he has managed to cramp the queenside expansion of pawns with a6. So White for that reason has a slight advantage. He's slightly more aggressive, more space. He has dulled the queenside attack that Black would normally be playing for. And why, why meanwhile his own attack on the king side has not been restricted in any way. So black plays rook a to b8. One idea of this move might be to provide the a8 square for the bishop and then double up his queen and bishop to pressurize the g2 pawn. Of course this can work right now with the knight on e5. So you're looking at a very long-winded plan by Jaden. In fact, I don't, I don't really think it was a great move. Let's look back at the position. This was where he played rook to b8. I'm saying his idea is probably a long-winded one of bishop a8 followed by knight coming back, taking the knight off of e5 and then doubling up his queen and bishop on the long diagonal which can easily be defended a hundred different ways by white. So I'm thinking the rook needs to be more aggressive. Probably rook probably rook to d8 is a move I would have preferred here. Putting some pressure on the center. The computer recommends b the b pawn to be pushed straight down to as far as it can go, right? Right now, white is threatening the c4 pawn, so <coughs> the computer recommends that you defend it. Jaden did not defend the pawn, so why didn't white take the pawn immediately? Let's look at that. If you take immediately, computer says the game is still even at this point because black would have a nice counter attack with bishop here he's counter attacking and gains back so interesting point of the game there so Jaden as usual goes, goes for a tactical solution rather than rather than a boring solid game, right? He loved the dynamics. Anyway, White did not allow him to do that counter-attacking move. He plays rook to e1, so he's renewing the threat of knight take c4. And at this point, Jaden realizes he has to defend it with the pawn now. White plays his rook up. Remember, white is going for a king side attack with moves like rook to h3 or g3, followed by bishop take h7 and queen coming in, depending on which one black allows. So, at this juncture, uh, I should resize this game a little bit. At this juncture, black played rook e to d8. Again, I don't know if I would have played that. I think I would prefer the rook that is now on b8 to be there. But now I'm understanding that black wants to push the pawn all the way down. So the rook on b8 is there for that purpose. And then the rook on the E file, he's going to use that on the central rank, so it's reasonable. White attacks on the G3, from the G3 point with his rook. And Jaden plays his bishop into E4, realizing that he wants to blunt some of these pieces now. They're getting really out of hand. Uh, there might be a tactic here that we should look at because I'm looking at queen take knight. Is it possible? Queen take knight. 
it would be an exchange sack. It wouldn't be possible. All right. No, it doesn't win anything. So bishop there first. Bishop swapped out. Knight comes in. And white plays a move which I don't like. He plays rook there. Jaden keeps the game active. Keeps his knight on an advanced square. And white now proceeds with his pawn. I don't like how white played because to me he gave away a lot of key pieces like the bishop on I wouldn't have given up my bishop so easy but I guess Jaden more or less forced him to do that. So he now has to attack with the queen, the rook and the knight. Meanwhile Jaden is trying to reposition maybe attack his a6 pawn or swing the rook over to the defense if he gets the chance. White is proceeding up the board almost unstoppable because all of the black pieces are on the other side of the board. Can't do much about it. The knight on e5 is totally cramping down that pawn on e6 which is totally restricting everything. So white actually gets right all the way up into black's um, king position. Black plays g6 now. And now can he get the rook and the queen into this game in a way where he can maybe sack on g6 or something like that. First move white does is f3. Black manages to bring this rook over to defend. The queen is trying to reposition near to g6 for a sack. Jaden sees that and plays g5, which is an interesting move. And it forces white to re-strategize and reposition. He goes back to f3 with his queen. And now Jaden decides to grab a pawn. I'm not sure he has time to be grabbing any pawn over there. I think maybe g5 might have been a better move. Um, let's look back. Go back one step. So at this juncture, the computer recommends the move queen to e7, which would allow the queen to come back and defend on the king side a bit better. The pawn on a6 is not relevant as far as Komodo is, is concerned. Um, but these things are easy to see in the comfort of your home. At the board in an Olympiad playing a strong player and you're getting a free pawn, it's not easy to resist. So he grabbed the pawn there. White didn't swap rooks there. He keeps his rook and brings it to the center of the board. And now black repositions his queen, trying to hold anything on the king side. White decides to come in with the queen on h5 now. And black would love to swap off the queen now. White not allowing that. And black trying to defend with rook f6. Now white simply kicks away the knight from its advanced square. Forces it to d6. And interesting move here he plays d5 what he's trying to do is open up the center file which is the e file where the queen is so black is not able to play moves like e take because it would be just too dangerous to have his queen on the same open file where there's a double rook so that d5 move is interesting in response to it, black decides to try and swap off that active knight and he gets his wish 
at this juncture white realizes he probably has a one game already plays queen check black trying to hold on but it's a little too late now and white is slowly and surely coming in with everything this move is a bit difficult to see as well it looks as if everything is holding together when suddenly white plays this and after he takes that he plays this somewhat surprising move and it's a checkmate in well if you play king up which is the only move it would be checkmate g4 so Jaden actually resigned one move earlier because he saw all of that so those were four of the top players of Jamaica at the Olympiad or four of the active players and the, I think the level of chess was pretty high the games were interesting uh, some good games of chess that's all we can say really um good luck to the team good luck to the viewers take care i'll probably do this again soon look at some of the other rounds and maybe make a video joining everything together and put my little analysis and two cents on it so far they are playing some good chess and we are glad for that so take care